Two Lexar cards. One has a check mark, one has an X. Uh, who can guess what that means? Yeah, you probably guessed it right. It means that one card is dead and one card is good. Uh, I talked to the client, he said he had more than one card that he purchased at the same time at the same place, which is a uh, secret sauce to success. <laughs> um, there are several ways that the data can be retrieved from memory cards. One of them is uh, to fix the card, which is probably not going to be an option. Uh, cards like that usually don't break from mishandling. Uh, and if they do, there is nothing to be done. Most of the time, I actually had a girl come in today with a, uh, with a Lexar card that was stuck in the laptop in her Mac, she was editing some stuff, and then she dropped the laptop and landed right on the card. Guess what happened to that card? That NAND chip was cracked right in half. No possible recovery in that situation. Uh, this case, however, um, <laughs> it's funny because it happened, the exact same thing happened to my card just over the weekend. 32 gig, this is a 64 gig. My card was 32 gig. I noticed that something was wrong when I plugged it into my Mac and it gave me this message that it needs to initialize. Um, I plugged it in, uh, ran our studio, our studio picked it up, but it detects it as uh, eight gigs capacity, which is ridiculous. Uh, so, and every sector that you try to access, it just comes back with no information, it's empty sectors. So uh, I'm recovering my card right now and hopefully it's going to be recovered because there's some stuff I don't want to lose on it uh, and this is like a shoeless shoemaker episode right there. But uh, this card, because we got two and hopefully they are the same, I'm just going to swap memory from failed device onto the working device and make it work. We're dealing with most likely uh, a card that has two uh, BGA either 132 or BGA 152 memory components. This is a donor, this card works. This is a failed card, this card doesn't work. This device uh, has uh, to go through the process of reballing and then has to be mounted to the donor. Uh, I wanna be as careful with it as possible and not damage the chip, not overheat it and uh, not apply extensive amounts of heat when I'm pulling them out. So, uh, preheat at, uh, I usually preheat at like 300, let it heat up, um, get it nice and warm, then make sure there's enough flux, and just uh, flow it at 360 to 390 from the top, get the chips flowing on them by themselves, and then gently slide them off. Uh, which you will probably see if the camera is going to be able to pick it up, but I'll try my best. Um, so, let's begin. Uh, the first thing I'll need is the uh, X-Acto knife. Is this uh, case off of a memory card. Um, first thing is to mark everything and make sure that, you know, uh, you keep track of what came from where. Because that is a very important part of the process. Um, it would be also not bad to uh, create a like a like an actual physical dump of the chips by putting them in the reader, but we're in a time of the day where I simply don't have luxury to do that right now. And this is a these are two BGA one fifty two chips. So mark them. Which one is the first one? Which one is the second one? And put maybe like a small X to show that that's a damaged device. So this is a chip number one. This is a chip number two. X, X. And let it sink in a little bit. The second card has to go through the same procedure, guys. <laughs> no way. No, this is going to be a, just a simple chip off. No, um, the swap is not going to is not going to happen here because 
here's the uh, reason why it's not going to happen. The, even though this, these cars have been maybe bought together, but they're not the same at all. Uh, this is based on BGA 152 package. You can see that there is almost no um, space between the chips when they're mounted. These are BGA 132 packages and uh, the gap between them is significantly bigger. Another uh, successful recovery and hopefully another happy customer. Um, this case went extremely well. I was a little worried because we do get these Lexar cars um, frequently and uh, when the video, is, video files need to be recovered, that uh, absence of, of uh, directory may pretty much uh, jeopardize the whole case because uh, due to fragmentation, uh, recovering video files in raw format is going to be very difficult. So uh, I really hope you guys enjoyed this third episode. I'm staying on track. I'm, I, I really got things planned out. So not planning to uh, drop out anytime soon. So stay with me. Uh, I'll see you guys tomorrow on the next episode. Uh, if you like this presentation, hit like, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done that already. And uh, see you tomorrow around the same time.